Hey guys, it's that time of the week again. It's Maverick here with another episode of Kiyomi Monogatari. So, uh, I believe uh, if we are going by order in how Araki met the girls you know, going all the way back in Bake, probably this episode is going to be in regards to Sengoku, right? This episode 5. And then the next one, maybe Shinobu if she counts, or uh, if not, then I guess Onanoki, perhaps? Uh, unless, of course, the sisters also make a, uh, an appearance here, which, to be honest, I actually don't know. But in any case, let's get into the episode, because, um, you know, there's not really that much else to say. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Ah, uh, Len I Circulation. Mata, mata. You know, I probably knew of this song way before I knew of anything else related to Monogatari. And, you know, the, so uh, the dance to this, the choreography to this, the original choreography to this was actually one of the biggest things on Nico Nico during that, uh, when it came out. There's many versions. You know, those old enough to remember or those who actually go watch Nika Nika stuff will remember Makoto-chan. Chatame. <laughs> Hola. Mata mata. Yara. Mara. Zuta zuta. Ah, I love this song. Who doesn't love this song? Early. Hello. The young, cute, innocent Sengoku, eh? <laughs> Popcorn. It's not like you haven't met him before, Sengoku. Okay. Really? So right after the Kaiki stuff, right? Party all night. <laughs> Single who's gonna be like, is it just me? And Koyomi Onichan? Of course. <laughs> Look at all the popcorn. Yes, yes, you two are alone together right now, Singaku. Do what you want to do. Heck. 
Carry down the wind. I feel like that's just a term of gossiping. Guy in his camera, yo. Right, get the influencers first, right? <laughs> Which is called organic growth? That's it? Hey, Kaiki. <laughs> we haven't actually said hi to him yet. Oh, it's Shinobi. So basically people like the gossip. <laughs> That's actually, I like that line. I like that line. Are they talking about like that black hole thing? Hmm. Oh, pay up. <laughs> Donuts on me.
Well, that was fast. Alright. Well, see you guys after this, I guess. Well, alright guys, we got quite a few highlights from this episode, actually. Uh, first of all, of course, still Land Ice Circulation. I said many times before, I love that song. Uh, putting that aside, uh, and also, obviously, we get to see the adorable Sengoku. Uh, I feel like even after all the events that happened, that transpired, uh, you know, the entire arc of Nariko Snake and whatnot, I still think that she's quite cute and all that. No, no bad, no hard feelings here, right? So, um, yeah, but putting those two aside from now, I think the conversation with Kaiki definitely is the highlight of this episode, right? And, you know, you gotta admit, Kaiki has some pretty great insights, right? I'm sure not everybody will agree with what he says, but to me, I think that just like Oshino Meime, uh, a lot of stuff that he says actually just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. Now, um, you know, what way you interpret them and um, whether or not you, you think those are good thoughts, you know, that, that depends on the values of each particular person. But at least for me, I do enjoy the, the various metaphors and references that he brings here. Um, but of course, amongst all that, the, the one thing to note here is the darkness that he's talking about, right? The emptiness. And you can't help but wonder, like, how um, is that in some way related to that black hole kind of thingy, uh, right? This indescribable thing that was following, um, you know, a few episodes back and really, you know, the conclusion of which was Hachikuchi's disappearance, right? Um, because... You know, that it, as it turns out, that thing is supposed to be like sort of like the rules of the world or something of that. And those who break the rules of the world need to get their existence wiped or something of that sort. So, um, you know, that's that. Whereas the darkness that he's talking about here, you know, within the context of what he was saying, it seems to me more so like... Um, like mental issues or mental problems in a sense. So going back to what I, you know, I've, I've said this many times before, I feel like the entire Monogatari series is just some sort of big, um, it, you know, all the aberrations and stuff is really just sort of describing mental issues and uh, and so on and so forth, you know, pers um, so it's it's like basically the the various problems that you would have and the various psycho psychological problems that you would have or face whilst going through the adolescence period of your life right so i at this point i'm still very firmly uh uh holding on to that theory here and um indeed for this one it makes even more sense right because it's like a direct reference uh i mean kaiki already said it basically his con his um you know, his the way that he can trick people is because they kind of want to be tricked, right? They have some situation which they cling to the hope of of something, anything that can that can remedy the situation here. And that kind of goes in with the darkness as well, right? Because if we're talking about, hey, you have to go through a period of darkness first, and then you enter into this chaotic state where you'll believe in anything anyone says right uh, so if we think about that um so say for instance you do have something that's that's weighing on your mind right you have some sort of something that's causing you stress or whatnot well obviously people can endure stress right so you got to go through that period first and then uh, once you uh, once you get past the point where that you can endure it further then that is when you would uh, ultimately uh, and irrationally latch on to any kind of any kind of solution that's provided to you right so I feel like you know that is I think Kaiki already spelt it out very very clearly that that's basically what that what that point is saying so that darkness you can interpret it as depression as um, you know as negative emotions and and so on and so forth and then you know leading on to to eventually falling for the um, the con arts of our beloved Kaiki here right so um you know that's that's good and dandy and all but I do have to wonder like is there any way to sort of reconcile these two different things together right the the sort of indescribable black hole that we saw before and this darkness that Kaiki is talking about can they actually mean the same thing well no it's a far stretch right now but but hear me out so as I was saying I I feel like the entire Monogatari series is just basically a bunch of uh, a bunch of high schoolers going through puberty going for adolescence and um, you know basically airing out their problems in in various different ways right so could that darkness also be signifying that Aragi himself is um, well hmm 
yeah, could it be signifying that Araki himself is, uh, you know, his kind of issues, his kind of problems are reaching a specific breaking point. And in fact, if it continues to go further, that is when his world or co would collapse in a sense, and um, he would be more willing to 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 accept anything else. Or in the case uh, of how it manifests itself within this story, you know, the world starting to become a little bit weird, right? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like on a conceptual level, it kind of makes sense, but uh, I'm not 100% sure about that. Maybe I'm just too tired right now, and uh, I'm kind of hallucinating things and whatnot, but let me know what you guys think, right? I, I do feel like there is some merit to, to this sort of linkage between these two, if you guys get what I mean. So anyways, um, it is actually quite late right now, so I'm not going to do the episode, uh, the, the next episode directly after this one, but I will try to get it out within this week, like maybe, heck, maybe even tomorrow, right? So stay tuned for that, um, and so uh, I will see you guys in the next one as well, and bye-bye.